When Nintendo launches a new console, there's one thing that the fans are clamoring for, and that's Mario. And Zelda, and Star Fox, and Metroid, and Earthbound. Especially Earthbound. People really like Earthbound. You should make another Earthbound game is what I'm getting at here, Nintendo. But anyways, the fans wanted Mario, but what they got instead was his brother. And the quote-unquote fans, being irrational as all hell, had to freak out. They said things like, wait, Luigi's Mansion isn't a Mario game. I want Mario! And look, your amazing deductive skills to figure out that a game called Luigi's Mansion is in fact not a Mario game aside, which, bravo, you can read. Luigi's Mansion is a fantastic game that I feel didn't get as much praise as it deserved, or at least it didn't at the time, which is a shame. But as I said, it's an amazing game. But lying beneath this great game, back in its early stages, lies some very interesting unused concepts that were removed from the final product. As I said, they were unused. And so today on Gaming Mysteries, I'll be talking about the beta of Luigi's Mansion. Now, Luigi's Mansion was initially shown off at Space World 2000 as a tech demo, at the time only serving the purpose of showcasing the power of the GameCube. But Nintendo decided to make it into a full game. Good move on Nintendo's part, if I do say so myself. The game was then shown off at E3 2001 and Space World 2001, and looking at these early builds of the game, you'll see some fascinating cutout ideas. Of course, like with every beta, there were a bunch of minor aesthetic differences, and we're just going to get these out of the way before we get into the good stuff. Your HUD looked different and contained both a coin meter and another meter that we're going to get into in a little bit. The Poltergust 3000, originally named the Poltergust 400, had more of a square design to it as opposed to its final counterpart. And during a certain boss battle, Luigi could actually ride the Poltergust 3000, or 400 in this case, I guess, to combat this particular boss that I'm not going to say the name of in case it's a spoiler. Aside from this, there were various changes to the designs of the mansion's rooms. Quite a few, actually. Some had different layouts, others had different names, some had different enemies, and others would have different items. There's way too many individual differences for me to go into full detail, though, so we're just going to leave things at that. Otherwise, this video would drag on pointlessly for a while, and I need that extra time to talk about the really interesting crap and insert my bullshit. It's important, you guys. Now, there were some differences found with the appearance of the ghosts, and some of this has to do with color and as you guys may or may not know, I'm not really good of colors, so bear with me. Orange or gold ghosts, see this color thing is already starting to screw me over, but they were originally going to be a white pinkish color with smaller eyes and a big nose. The other ghosts had different appearances as well, different colors and whatnot. As you can see, I'm purposely kind of skimming over this because colors. But one ghost's beta version stands out like a sore thumb, and that's purple punchers. Purple punchers in the beta version of the game would pop up behind Luigi, and then Luigi would scream and crawl on the floor like a bitch. No offense, just saying. Aside from the crawling, this would also cause Luigi to both lose 50 HP and have his HP cut in half temporarily. Now, this seemed like a neat, if not dickish gameplay mechanic, so I'm okay with this being left out. Now, moving back to the Poltergust 3000 or... 400, whatever. Initially, it had a pressure meter that ranged from 1 to 10, and if it reached 10, the vacuum would burst out into flames, causing Luigi to fall backwards and lose HP. Now, this element seems to go hand in hand with another left out game mechanic that I briefly mentioned earlier, so let's get into that and connect the pieces. In the early versions of the game, on the bottom right hand side of the screen, you'll notice a timer, and in Nintendo Power Magazine, may it rest in peace by the way, it was said that Luigi had to save Mario within 24 hours. Which is very fascinating, because the time mechanic, mixed with the limited use of the Poltergust 3,400, I don't care, and enemies like Purple Punchers having attacks that can severely cripple you, adds a nice new dynamic and difficulty to things. Though the changes to the overall gameplay didn't stop there, as the game was originally going to have what was called an RPG-type quality that would include real-time changes of the rooms and an underground cave-like basement. The mix between a set time limit for you to complete the game, not being able to use the Poltergust all willy-nilly like I like to do, having enemies that could royally screw you over, and have rooms that change in real time makes for a totally different gameplay experience. Or so I say, having not played this version of the game. Though out of all of this, the 24-hour time limit interests me the most. And it sparked theories as to what would happen if you got a game over or didn't save Mario within the time limit. One theory was that should the player get a game over or not save Mario in time, that the mansion along with Mario would disappear. Another theory is that Luigi would be possessed by a ghost or just be super depressed. 
This is represented by some leftover files found in the game. There is one for a great rank, a good rank, and bad rank. And a possessed Luigi does sound very neat, though perhaps a little dark for the audience that Nintendo tends to shoot for. But I think it's cool. In any case, I would have loved to play this version of the game as it sounds awesome as all hell. At the very least, it could have been included in like a Master Quest fashion, like an Ocarina of Time, as in a harder version of the game that you could play through after you complete the normal game. I think it would be pretty cool. And because I think it's cool is why it'll probably never happen, because dreams don't come true. But would you believe me if I said that the changes don't stop here, because they don't? Originally, the game was built with the intention of being in 3D, and no, not just 3D graphics, like Stupid Glasses 3D. You know, James Cameron. The GameCube was built with 3D components that could be activated by an unreleased add-on, and yet again in Gaming Mysteries, I bring up some obscure add-on for a Nintendo system, but that unreleased add-on would cost more than the console itself, so I can see why they ditched this, as it sounds insane. Despite them dropping the 3D elements from the game though, those elements would eventually come to fruition with Luigi's Mansion 2 for the 3DS, so for the seven of you who were really stoked about that 3D component in the original version, good for you! Yeah! There was also yet another unreleased add-on, you heard me right, that would allow you to use the Game Boy Advance as a controller. And speaking of the Game Boy Advance, originally you were going to be able to use that instead of the in-game Game Boy Horror. Though, when they first started using that idea, the Game Boy Advance wasn't concrete enough for them to implement it. Oh, and the game may have started on the N64. I can't find a quote that straight up says, Yeah, this game started on the Nintendo 64, you guys, but I do find quotes that kind of say that. The quotes aren't as specific as I would have liked, but it really wouldn't surprise me if this was true, seeing as there are a lot of other projects that started on the N64, but were later moved to another platform. But those are topics for another day. But that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover on the beta of Luigi's Mansion. When looking at what was left out of the game as far as removed gameplay mechanics go, I'm pretty bummed that stuff got removed. Don't get me wrong, the final product is great and amazing and all that happy sunshine stuff that I mentioned before, but as I said, this other neato version of the game sounds very fascinating, minus the 3D stuff because I could give two shits about that, and the Game Boy thing. But that other stuff sounded pretty great. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to mull over the what if version of Luigi's Mansion, because it's a slow ass day. This has been Gaming Mysteries, thanks for watching.